Hello everybody and welcome to my next tutorial. My name is Maltanen and uh, I've I've got a short story for you. A um, few weeks ago all evil forces joined their power to stop me from recording new tutorials and uh, I was I was fighting with them you know like all the time and my server was fighting with them and we both died. My server died for a week and I was dead for a few weeks also, but then when I went down to hell, um, I took them by surprise when they didn't expect it. And so now I'm back and I'm back with a new tutorial, especially for you. And today we are going to do some object removal. Uh, this is the final result of what we are going to do. And let me just close this down. Um, where is the project window? Where is the project window? Here it is, okay. And this is the original footage, so we are going to get rid of this little guy in here. And also we're going to get rid of those nasty spots in here. I hope you can see them. See? Some spots, some dirt on the wall. And we are not going to get rid of this crack uh, in the wall, because I kind of liked it. Um, okay, so uh, as you can see, we have a camera moving in this picture. So what we are going to do is we are going to track the footage, and then go to Photoshop and remove this little fellow in here, and then come back and fix the problem. So uh, let me just start from scratch. Let's just delete all this. And first of all, let's import our footage. And let's make a new comp. That's right. Uh, and now, the first thing to do is to um, somehow move this frame or this frame, but I think this one will be much better. Um, the first step is to move this frame into Photoshop and we all know how to do it file export or just you know render or do uh, for example a proxy file like create proxy still or whatever but there's also a cool After Effects plugin that I uh, would really like to recommend you uh, and it's called Obvious Effects Copy Image and there's also the second one, erodation er, or erodilation, some, something like that. And uh, they are both free, so I really encourage you to download them, because you have this function when you install copy image inside the edit menu, and this is obviously something that was missing from After Effects all this time. So, copy image, now let's move to Photoshop, File, New, OK, paste it in. We can also use a pixel aspect ratio. I think this is the one, uh, this one. But it doesn't change anything, really. So now let's get down to removing this object. Um, this would be much easier if we wouldn't have this uh, shadow angled shadow in here um, because now you know when we try to do something like this we cannot aim this correctly and besides most of you probably think that we should use the patch tool to do something like that and this is basically right but as you can see we get those uh, nasty spills in here and in here uh, maybe because I've selected this uh, not the right way Let's try it. This should do. Well, in fact, it's not that bad. Uh, but we have a nasty spill going on in here, so we'll try to get rid of it. Uh, you know what? Let me just create a new adjustment layer. Uh, levels, I think. So we can see this a little bit better. Then we will remove it, of course. Um, and now let's go to Healing Brush Tool. And here's a cool tip for you. Um, when you're dealing with straight lines or angled lines, 
basically something that is a line or a pattern it's always hard to align the brush to the source point right so what I always do is to of course select the source point so hold the alt key on your keyboard and then just choose the source point and always try to choose something that is you know a straight line or something that you can identify in the other parts of the image so I'm choosing this line in here I click to select the source point and then when I'm trying to uh, start painting with this brush I hold the alt key again to align the brush just like I did in the source point but then I let it go and I just start painting so it goes like this but of course I need to be on this layer not on the adjustment layer okay sorry for that so let's go again alt click now alt to align the brush let go of the alt and paint over voila and uh, in this area I think we can use a patch tool it should do okay that's right and the same goes for this area in here so the next thing to do is let me just go to After Effects for a second as you can see this guy moves around a bit and uh, we really don't want that and uh, well I mean we want him to move of course but it makes things a little bit difficult and we would have to just recreate the part of this background so uh, there are several ways to do it but in this case I think we will just select this part of the image copy and paste it over so it pastes in the exact same position and do the same thing with this part of the image copy paste so it pastes in the exact same place like before and now let me just stretch this out a bit and do the same with this one so control T free transform tool and to do that precisely just drag this and it should snap as you can see okay and now let's just shift drag this like so and then let's just turn the opacity down a bit and maybe change the mode to difference so we can align this with the original shadow like so control and arrows allow you to move the move the layer up and down or left and right okay that's it and uh, let's go back to 100 and we don't want this uh, crack in the wall in the in this case because we'll we want to keep the original uh, so let's just go ahead and remove it just you know uh, we don't have to be really precise in this because this is not going to be visible anyway I'm using the healing brush tool and that's it and now um, we would like to merge those two layers so select them both and press ctrl E on your keyboard so now we have one layer and now we have to create a mask and why is that because uh, now we want to reveal the original like so so we keep you know the shadows and the lights exactly as they were but we will just paint over this guy like so and uh, you can obviously see that this color is a bit darker but you don't have to worry about that because uh, it is going to be covered by this guy in After Effects because we are going to draw a mask um, so I think this is this is basically okay let's get rid of the adjustment layer and now let's just make a 
square selection, rectangular selection. Let's just crop the image to this selection and let's save this as a JPEG or whatever. Um, wall JPEG. Yes, overwrite. Highest quality. Okay. And we are all ready to go. So let's go back to After Effects. And now, let's just import this footage, of course. And first of all, when you um, just put it into the comp, you see that the size is not right. And this is because of the pixel aspect ratio. So, as you can see, this one is 1.3 and this one is 1.0. So, we have to interpret the footage right. And to do that, just select, I think this is the one in this case. That's right. And see how it matches. Okay, now we can just turn it off for now. And we have to track this footage. So to do that, just go to Window and Tracker Controls and select Track Motion. Let's just zoom in. And um, this is obviously not the best thing to track because we have a low contrast, so it's good to have a bigger uh, track point in, in this case. And also, you would like to change, uh, check your options and see what you're really tracking. Is it RGB, luminance, or saturation? And in this case, I think I will enhance the, uh, the image before applying the tracker. So, I think we're ready to go. Track forwards. Well, I think it's doing pretty well. This will take a second. The bigger the track point, uh, the longer the tracking will take, but in some cases you really want to wait. So the tracker, um, you know, tracks correctly. Like this one. As you can see, we have a perfect track. At least it looks like it. And... Um, the thing I will always do when tracking, I create a null object that will hold the tracked data. So tracking data camera, because it is much easier to manage that way. Um, you know, later on you have more flexibility, more uh, more uh, things you can do with those tracking data. Because normally you would apply them to a layer, but then you know you have to uh, change the keyframes and stuff like that and if you just apply it to the null object and then parent what you want to move with the tracking data to this null object, then you can animate uh, the layer you know, the way you want it and it will still follow the tracking data. I, am, am I clear or not? Ah, never mind. Just wait and, wait and see and everything will be clear. Okay, so let's click on Edit Targets, TD Camera, and... Uh, Let's hit apply, and that's it. And now, as you can see, we have this tracker following our track point pretty well. And now let's turn the layer back on, and let's parent it to our null object. And as you can see, everything's everything is going smoothly. So, uh, and now we have to draw a mask, but. Um, we can do it in two ways. Uh, first of all, we can draw a mask around uh, this layer, or we can move the footage layer up and then draw a mask around uh, around this guy. And I think uh, this is what I'm going to do. So let me just zoom in. And uh, we don't have to be really precise. You know what? Let me create an, just, uh, an adjustment layer with some levels. Um, so I can see things a little bit better. Uh, that's right. Okay. So let's draw a mask. Like so. 
we don't have to be really precise because uh, we will fix this later and you know what let me just turn off the mask for now and uh, click on mask shape so we can animate it and let's start animating so control right arrow to move to the next frame and like so we can move a few frames forward we don't have to do it you know frame by frame this guy is moving in a general up direction I think so and we can always feather the mask later on so so we don't have to be you know very precise on this okay I think that's right control shift right arrow so we're moving 10 frames forward the only thing to remember is to keep the uh, this dirt out of the uh, mask shape so we're doing just that and now we really don't have to be that precise and we are ready to go so now let's go back let's turn the mask back on and let's see how it looks but first we're going to create a rectangular mask that will overlap our layer in this area and in this area let me just turn off the adjustment layer and make a quick ramp preview well it looks okay for me so uh, thanks for watching I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this tutorial and I really encourage you to downloading those obvious effects from obviousfx.com or from my website uh, maltanan.com and I hope you will join me in the future in the you know battle between the forces of good and evil so see you then thanks for watching cheers